The lifeblood of a democracy is your ability to understand and act upon a problem once the facts are presented to you. The purpose of this motion picture is to give you the facts, and then you, as individuals and citizens of a democracy, must take action. A growing dispute over the future of America's most popular doll. The question, should Barbie come in a plus-size edition? A Facebook group called Plus Size Modeling posted a petition online, and it got 40,000 likes. But not everyone is on board. The double chin isn't necessary. I would prefer to see a Barbie, a plus size, a curvy girl Barbie doll that's not, that doesn't have a triple chin, but if that's all we get, I'll take it. No word yet from Barbie's maker, Mattel Toys, if the company plans on giving the doll a new look. Hey, Fruit Bass, it's really the Banana Girl here. Welcome to another episode. So sorry I'm late. I've had a few technical issues, and technical stuff is not my forte. Okay, so today's video is on plus size model promotion. This is a hugely controversial, very sensitive topic, and the main reason it is so sensitive is because most of the population is overweight. About 70% of Australians and Americans are overweight. So of course, people are going to take offense to this. And I'm sorry folks, I can't help that. I'm here to deliver the truth to you, so I hope you can appreciate that. There's some people out there who say, oh, you're a fat shamer, you're so rude for mentioning someone's weight, you're this, you're that. Get over it. I'm here to deliver the truth. If you cannot handle it, unsubscribe, get off my channel because I'm here to help people. You know, we really need to drop these fragile egos and get with the times and realize we are in the grips of something awful. This obesity situation needs to be stopped. We need to get fit and healthy. We need to get real with ourselves and realize what the problem is here. Obesity is the terror within. It is destroying us, destroying our society from within. And unless we do something about it, the magnitude of the dilemma will dwarf 9-11 or any other terrorist event that you can point out to me. So this is a terror from within. It's destroying us. I am all for, like I've said in other videos, I'm all for people feeling their best, okay? That's what, why I do what I do. That's why I promote a healthy lifestyle. That's why I promote fitness. I'm all about people feeling good about themselves. But I'm not interested in helping people lie to themselves, okay? We need to get real about where we're at. If we're overweight, we are overweight, and, we, and statistics show time and time again, we are increasing our risk of all the major illnesses of this time. Cancer, diabetes, stroke, gout, all the nasty shit that you don't want to be a part of, okay? And you're also cutting your life short. What's the difference between having weight, say, you know, of your woman on your arms or your thighs as opposed to your waist? Why is it more dangerous if it's, if it's on your waist? Well, we're looking at where the fat is and what the fat is. So basically, what we've always talked about previously is the body mass index. That's a measure of your weight relative to your height. That's useful for a population study. But on an individual basis, it doesn't tell us is it muscle tissue or is it fat tissue? Right. That's where the waist circumference comes in because it gives us an idea of, you know, if somebody mm. is a heavier weight, is it muscle? Well, if the waist size is going up, that's not muscle tissue. No. That's, that's where the fat mm. is being deposited. And the thing is, why, but why is that bad? Um, I can understand it doesn't look good, but what is it actually doing to you? So those higher waist relations and the, the body mass index together, they're giving us an idea of a relation to certain health conditions and we found that as those waist sizes go up we're getting an increase in type 2 diabetes, in heart mm. disease factors, in strokes, in anginas, in osteoarthritis. It's basically linked to all those increasing Well risk we factors. all know that. I think we all know that message is what you actually do about it or what you feel you can do about it. Um, sucking when a lot of fashion festivals actually ban anorexic models, why is it then okay for overweight models to be accepted on the runway? This double standards is not okay. We need to see how hypocritical we're being. I am not in support of the anorexic models. I'm not in support of the plus size models. I'm in support of down the middle, fit, healthy models representing health, okay? And some of you out there are like, oh, you know, this is so like, this is body shaming and this is a body image abuse or whatever. Actually, this isn't, this isn't a, like a feminist issue. This isn't a cosmetic issue. This is a health issue. Okay, so get over this whole like physical, you know, aesthetic focus 
And let's focus on the health issue that is obvious. All right, and you might say, oh, you know, you can be fat and you can be a bit overweight and healthy. Like I said, you know, every time, every bit of weight above your body's ideal weight, you are increasing your risk of disease. Dr. David Clark, today I'm going to be talking about why being overweight is going to destroy your brain. There's plenty of research out there to show that people that are overweight, especially really overweight, have poor brain function. There's a great study that was just published that showed that people that are obese have degeneration, like literally brain cells dying in parts of the brain like the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe. Now, if that's happening to someone that's obese, what if you're 20 pounds or 30 pounds overweight? That's still happening, it's just not happening on a large of a scale. So maintaining a normal weight is extremely important. Now, many people out there don't know how to lose weight, and I got news for you, there is no magic bullet, so don't think I'm gonna tell you about one. There isn't a pill you're gonna take that's gonna make you lose weight. Number one, the number one thing that's gonna help you lose weight is do you want to? Are you actually going to follow through with it? Now, that's a whole psychology thing that I don't have time to talk about. But what I want to let you know is that what, here's what the science is showing. If you are overweight at all, you increase your levels of insulin, which is an inflammatory marker. Okay, and insulin is not a thing that should be floating around in your body. Everyone thinks that it's good because, you know, diabetics need insulin, but that's not how it works. It means you've got increased inflammation in your body. And that increased inflammation immediately increases the odds that in your brain you're going to get inflammation. And inflammation in your brain is a horrible thing, and it, you don't want to get neural or neuroinflammation. Now, if you do, and a lot of the people that I treat do have neuroinflammation, there are things we can do naturally to get it under control, but it's hard. And I got a better idea. Why not? How about not getting it in the first place? And the best way to do that is to maintain a healthy weight. Now, if you're already overweight, what do you need to do? Well, in my opinion, you need to have your cortisol levels assessed. You need to have the health of your adrenal glands assessed. You need to have neurotransmitters assessed. There's a lot of things you need to look at. But here's something that you can practically do. You ready? Walk every day. That's it. Just walk. Walk 10 to 15 minutes every day. Start trying to lose weight. It just really concerns me that we've got this, you know, like just accept, love yourself how you are, accept yourself. There's kind of nothing you can do about it attitude that I see emerging a lot. This is dangerous. This is very, very dangerous. You have to face the facts. Okay, and like with the plus size models, you know, we've been harping on about anorexic models for forever. Okay, and how they're not a good representative, not a good role model for young women, and how they perpetuate um, eating disorders. And I 100% agree. I think they're terrible role models. You know, they're, they're you know, snorting coke and they're starving themselves. I am not about that at all. I'm all about abundance, as a lot of you know. But why do we then not see the plus size models as doing the same thing? Okay, like how are they presenting a healthy role model? How are they being a healthy role model when what they're presenting actually represents diabetes, cancer, illness in the body? Okay, that is not being responsible. So that's a good example of how we're being hypocritical, where, you know, we're all about attacking the anorexic models, but the overweight models, they're like, oh, let's just love them, you know, you're a fat shamer, don't speak about someone's weight. I'm sorry, it does not work like that. It needs to cut both ways. Let's meet in the middle ground, let's have healthy, fit models. I had my personal experience in the industry was starting as a plus size model, being an athlete, I played volleyball and basketball for nine years. So I was very fit, but I was larger. I was probably like a size 12. And when I went to New York, they were like, oh, you're great, but can you gain weight? And I thought that was so weird because that is not what a 17-year-old wants to hear. Uh, first to be called plus size and then to be told to gain weight. And so because I went to college, I had gained the freshman 20 because no one taught me nutrition. And from there, I um, started working a lot because I was now a size 14. And I started to make, you know, six figures at 18 years old. And I thought that was the happiness that I was looking for. And as a young girl, you're told will make you feel valued. And so when that happened and I didn't feel that happiness and I didn't really feel that value I was searching for, um, I really wanted to find it in my health because I knew at the end of the day I wasn't, I wasn't happy with my, with my body. I didn't feel healthy. I didn't feel like I was at a natural weight for my body. I was doing that so that I could work. And I got to a point where that wasn't worth it enough for me. So I lost 50 pounds after learning how to eat right and to just totally change my lifestyle to be more active. I'm so much happier. 
because I just feel so much stronger about myself, both physically and mentally. And I feel confident in how I look, and I think that um, this is the best place for my body. I'm now about a size eight. Okay, so as I said, I'm all about people feeling good, okay, and loving themselves. But when I see these campaigns like big, big is beautiful, health at every size, I get worried, okay? I get really worried because I can see the damage these campaigns do. They help people feel, you know, comfortable at that size. And getting comfortable, you know, it's like when you're in a relationship and you're comfortable, you don't really want to leave. You're just sort of like, yeah, you just tread along. And because there's a lot of other people overweight in the society, then we start to feel comfortable with where we're at. No, we need to get uncomfortable. We need to face the facts. So there's a lot of people out there like, no, 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 you gotta love yourself first and then the change comes after that. Folks, that's what people have been doing for years and years and years and guess what? We're getting fatter and fatter and fatter and people are trying to love themselves because the fact is you cannot truly love yourself when you're abusing yourself at the same time. You know, you might be saying, I love you, I love you, I love you to the mirror and then after that you go out there and have a pizza or you have, you know, a steak or something like that, which abuses your organism, which does not make you feel loved, okay? You have to love your body through your actions, okay? And your actions mean eating nutritious food, high power vegan diet. That is the way you truly love yourself. So then when you're at that size, you know, you're starting to shrink. And then it's easier to begin loving yourself because you're, you're loving yourself through your actions, not just through words. Okay, that really don't mean anything at the end of the day. Um, look, if you want to feel good about yourself, it's, it's impossible to feel good about yourself when you're doing something that's self-destructive. Also, self-destruct behaviors that result in damage, debilitation, or even disfigurement to the body, that's never going to be perceived as beautiful. So the statistics show that our waists are 12 inches bigger than what they were in the 1950s when my mum was born. So that's a huge increase, okay? And some of you might be using the excuse, oh, it's my genetics, you know, I can't help it. Come on, get real. We can all be slim, fit, and healthy, but not all of us are willing to do what it takes to get there, okay? And also, we are 20 pounds heavier than what we were 20 years ago. So, you know, the, the statistics are there, and it's up to you to now use them as motivation and step up and reclaim your health or claim it for the first time ever. Um, yes, my, my entire family is obese, and I have to tell you, when you grow up with the people that you love and respect the most, and you see the hardship, the damage uh, to their bodies and spirit due to obesity, uh, it breaks your heart. My grandmother just passed away uh, this February, and she lay in a bed for four years, not even getting up to go to the bathroom because she got so heavy she had to be put in a home. And uh, it, it's, it's just beyond tragic, and I think calling... What gets people to that point beautiful is dangerous and really cruel. Um, I think it comes from a good place, wanting people to feel good. But I think some and there's people out there saying, "Freely, you're causing eating disorders making videos like this." Uh uh, I'm sorry, folks, but people already have eating disorders, and I'm the one actually helping them come out of the eating disorder and embrace audibly eating. So remember, folks, this is not a cosmetic issue about aesthetics, about fat shaming. This is a health issue and we're in a health crisis. You might like, you know, women or men with more weight on them. That's your own personal opinion, that's fine. But this is a health issue that needs to be addressed. We need healthy, fit, lean role models in society. You don't have to look like me. I'm not saying look like me. I'm saying like the healthiest version of yourself and for everybody that is a fit, lean body. And everybody is capable of doing that. So you've got to step up and claim what has always been yours, and that's to be your best. All right, so that's my thoughts on the issue today. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think, and I will see you soon. Don't forget to go for it. Okay. Or root yourself. Go free to yourself.